Hey YouTube, welcome to the Bearded Muffin channel. I'm a professional 3D animator and I intend to talk more about that moving forward. But today, I'll be talking about another passion of mine, which is computer hardware, but with a focus on what you need to work with animation. And also because I got this PC right here for only $20. Before we get started, a small disclaimer. Buying used parts is always going to be a gamble and you should always tread carefully when shopping secondhand. Never hesitate to ask on forums for feedback, make sure you buy from well-reviewed sellers, always ask to test the part out, and when in doubt, don't buy used if you don't feel comfortable doing so. That said, let's see what those $20 got us. This is the Acer VM6630G. It came with an i5-4590 CPU with the Intel stock cooler, a Z87 chipset proprietary motherboard from Acer, 8GB of DDR3 1600MHz in dual channel, a 500GB mechanical hard drive, the AMD HD 5570 1GB of DDR3 VRAM, and 300 watts Bronze Plus power supply. The original ad said this unit wasn't working, but I decided to take a shot at it, see if I could figure out what was wrong and bring it back to life. First time in turning it on, pre-cleaning and repasting, and yeah, it works just fine. Motherboard is posting properly, taking some time because of the mechanical hard drive, but booting into Windows 10 without any issues. Those $20 were already worth it. After wiping the old data clean and reinstalling Windows 10, I took a look to confirm all the specs and look at some of the numbers. The CPU sitting around 50 degrees Celsius idle isn't the best, of course, but this unit does need cleaning and the mechanical hard drive has the boot drive, does feel really sluggish. Next step is opening up this PC and starting the cleaning process. By opening up the case, I can already see this unit needs some love. I won't dive into much detail on the cleaning process today, since there are amazing YouTube videos showing how to do it, but mostly I use tools like a compressed air can, soft bristle brushes, 99% isopropyl alcohol, Q-tips, and a microfiber cloth. Cleaning your PC is a great way to learn more about it, and I highly recommend you trying it out someday. But if you don't feel comfortable doing so, a local repair shop near you will get the job done. Okay, now everything looks really good. And the first thing you notice is that the CPU is now idling around 35 to 37 degrees Celsius, which is a welcome improvement to what we had before. Now that we have Windows installed and updated with the latest drivers, we are ready to see what this PC can do. The first thing I need to get out of the way, the newest versions of Blender, Maya and similar apps won't run on this machine. The hardware is a bit outdated for those. But the good news is, you'll be able to run older versions that are still quite usable. And focusing on Blender, you can run up to version 3.6, which is still a good version to work with and start learning CG. Also, the Blender Foundation makes it easy for you to download any older versions on their website and you'll have plenty of videos to start your journey. You won't be able to work on very complex scenes. You will be very limited on something like simulation and feel the lag if working with a fully lighted viewport, but should be a smooth experience on shaded mode here on lightweight files. I also ran Cinebench R20 and initially, I thought the score was a bit on the low end, coming even lower than the i5-3550 CPU, but after a second test, we got a new score of 1196 and that reflects better what this machine is capable of. Graphic design is another option for this setup on light workloads. Heavy files might take a toll on the limited RAM, but even doing some testing on Affinity Photo 2 and applying some effects while moving the canvas, I did not notice any significant slowdowns besides some occasional artifacts. I also tried video editing on DaVinci Resolve, but for some reason, the videos wouldn't show on the preview, even with updated codecs and drivers, and if I tried to play it, DaVinci would just freeze. There might be a workaround, but with only 8GB of DDR3 RAM and this little GPU, I'm filing this under. This machine just won't handle video editing. Now that we know that this machine can do creative work, let's see what else it got. And to no one's surprise, this will do great in day-to-day -day tasks, like browsing the web, getting some office work done, editing documents, schoolwork as well, and even some light gaming is possible here, from older PC games to emulation. Video playback is also great with these specs, with YouTube videos running great at 1080p and 4K resolution, and little to no drop frames on our tests. Goes to show this machine will be great for streaming as well. You can turn this machine into your own private server, back up your files, you can run your own personal cloud storage on this, a media server like Plex or Jellyfin, a game server for Minecraft, a sandbox machine if you are a developer, this will do the trick. For all those use cases, shows how far old hardware can go and proves these machines still have a lot of life left on them. 
But yeah, we're gonna go there, aren't we? What can we actually game on this machine? I tested some older games, indie games, and emulation to see what we can do with this machine as is. And just a bit of warning, I know the ideal mark is 1080p at 60fps, but I do consider playable anything 30fps or over, running at least on 720p resolution. It is important to say that I went to AMD Overdrive and bumped up the GPU as much as I could without compromising stability. With that said, let's start with something easy, Shredder's Revenge running Buttersmooth at 1080p. You will have an amazing time beating up those Foot Clan soldiers like the time I was playing Turtles in Time on my cousin's Super Nintendo. Other 2D games like this, such as Cuphead or Celeste, will play just fine on this setup. I also tried out DuckTales Remastered, ran just fine at 1080p at a constant 60fps. Easy job for this CPU and GPU combo, another great game to play and a neat throwback to my childhood. Now Hades at 1080p, which was hovering between 45 to 50fps. You can always go to 900p and you'll probably be closer to 60fps, but 1080 looked great, and besides the occasional minor drop in fps during battles, I had a great time playing it like this. We are now heading to older AAA games, starting with Half-Life 2. Playing here at 1080p with a medium-high settings, it runs smoothly at 60 FPS. No stutters, and honestly, this game still looks great even for today's standards. Original Modern Warfare 3 at 1080p medium settings. Butters move above 120 FPS on average, even on more dense scenes with lots of enemies and particle effects. If you want to bump up the quality to high, you should get somewhere around 70 to 75 FPS on average. But as is right now, it looks really good. But if grace is within Another grace must play in my opinion, and here, this PC starts showing its age. At 1080p, it would hover below 30 FPS and didn't really feel great. Even at the low presets, it would struggle to get above 30. But taking it down to 900p low and locking it to 30fps, it will still look really good and you can play like this all day long. Let's try some Rocket League. Playing at 1080p on performance presets will put you close to a 30fps average but will dip under to around 20 to 25fps. But I do recommend going to 900p performance presets. It will net you a few more fps and still look really good. Wanted to throw a fighting game here, and I'm going for another one, but still great to play. Injustice at 900p, low settings, no anti-aliasing, and we are getting 50 to 55 FPS on average, dipping occasionally to 30, mainly on special moves with lots of particles on screen. But all things considered, it's a great experience and totally playable like this. This machine would do great with emulation as well. For Windows, you can install the emulators individually, but I do recommend going with something like EmuDeck or Retrobat, which is the one I'm using here today. You'll be able to run almost any game up to Dreamcast without any issues. Some even upscale to 720p or 1080p. Genesis, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Saturn and Nintendo 64, this PC got you covered. To showcase how this machine shines on emulation, we can see here God of War Ghost of Sparta on PSP running close to a steady 60fps, upscale to 1080p. Some minus stutters, but not too bad. You can always go to 720p and have a pretty smooth experience with this game. To wrap up, God of War on PS2 running at 1.5 upscale, stable at 60fps. I did try 720p, which would be 2x, but it would hover around 53 to 55fps, making the game pretty much unplayable. This is a good example of the ceiling we have with this setup, and it will depend on your configuration, but great to see this PC taking on harder to run consoles like PS2. Microsoft is ending Windows 10 support later this year, and even though you can continue using it after that period, you won't have any security updates moving forward. This CPU might be able to handle Windows 11 at some capacity, but with the mechanical hard drive and only 8GB of memory, it won't be a smooth experience. So, what do I recommend? If you don't intend to upgrade the hardware at all, I would definitely consider installing Linux on this machine. A distro like Mint, which is the one I'm using here, or Pop OS, will work great with the current specs and they are definitely more user-friendly. The performance for basic usage will be close to what we saw with Windows, 
you can find most apps that you need for day-to-day -day tasks. Video playback is good at 1080p and of course, there's the upside of being free. I'll leave links in the description for all apps used on this video in case you wish to try some of them out. Despite some restrictions, this setup would be a great startup PC for someone looking to get into a creative industry like animation or graphic design. You would need something better if you want to get into heavier workflows, such as video editing, particle simulation on Houdini, or even working with a game engine like Unreal. But honestly, as a stopgap computer to get you going, this will handle light workloads just fine. For other users, this will perform really well on day-to-day -day tasks, it's good for video streaming, it can be a great personal service if you can expand storage on this case, and it can run older games at a decent resolution if you're okay with some compromises and not playing the latest AAA titles. For only $20, this PC is packing a punch, it has great cost benefit, and it definitely has a lot of life left on it. I hope you all enjoyed this inaugural video and there will be more to come for sure, including some upgrades we will be doing in this particular machine to see how far we can push this. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel, I would definitely appreciate the thumbs up and also do leave a comment on what would be your particular use case for this PC. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Cheers!